Hi, my name is Dimitri. I'm the new children's director here at Buffalo Free Church, and I want to thank you for joining us for our Christmas Eve service. If you want to join us for our candle lighting, feel free to pause the video now, go grab some candles, and just stand by and enjoy worship with us and the message Pastor Greg is bringing. But if not, you don't have to. Now, let's get right in. Hi guys, I'm Dimitri. I want to be I want to read from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 20. I will be reading from the NLT. If you are at home, I encourage you to pause the video, grab a Bible and read along at Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 20. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their home to their ancestral town to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lo there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people, the Savior. Yes, the Messiah. The Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by his sign, by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go back to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story was astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. 
the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. No Four words on a Christmas card received a few weeks ago had never held so much meaning as they do this year. I'm weary. You are weary. The world is weary. In 2020, it's obvious that the world is broken. The truth is it's been that way for a long time. But there is hope in this fallen world, a real, deep, and eternal solution that solution is not found through policies of the government or through science or wealth or man's wisdom. It is found in the real meaning of Christmas. A baby in a manger, God incarnate, become flesh to be born, to live as a man and to die on a cross for our redemption. That's the only solution for a weary world. And that is why even in our weariness, we can rejoice. Will you sing with me, O Holy Night? O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, night divine. 
as we consider our time at the Advent candle, I want to remind you we lit a candle for hope, a candle for peace, a candle for love, and a candle for joy. All four of those things are found in Jesus Christ. And that's whose candle we light now, the candle of the Christ child, the coming of the Christ child. For we find hope, peace, love, and joy in Jesus Christ. Got a little candle that wants to be a little slow here today. But you know, I have a question for you. Are you having a spot for Jesus Christ in your life this Christmas? Are, are, you, are you focused on the Christ child? There is a poem that has been written. Let me share it with you. Tell me, is the child still there? For I'm too busy to look. There are hundreds of Christmas cards to mail to the names in my address book. Tell me, is the child still there? I cannot take time to see with a turkey to buy and presents to tie and lights for the Christmas tree. Tell me, is the child still there? I have not had the chance with parties and pageants and all and, and arranging the office dance. Tell me, is the child still there? I have come at last to call, but the shepherds I barely see in the child, not at all. Ralph Sager wrote this poem in 1966. But I think it's just as on point today as it was then. We are so caught up in the trapping and the hustle and bustle of our world and of this season that we often miss the reason for our season, which is the child, Jesus Christ. We miss the child. So this this time together, I want to stop and, and take us away from the tinsel and the trees and the lights and the pageantry. I just want to give you a babe, the babe of Bethlehem. And I want to take a very uh, treasured part of Scripture, a verse that you probably have heard before, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. I want to talk about that with you. And so first, God's gift to us, this child, is first a loving gift. It is a gift given out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. This has been God's calling card. The card of love has been his, his moniker throughout the Old Testament. In fact, the last book of the Old Testament has a verse here that says, I have loved you, says the Lord. Love. This gift comes out of love. So what's so great about God's love? Well, first, it's his nature. It's not derived. It's not made up. It, it is self-contained in him, and it is just who he is. It's his nature to love us. Second, it's his name. God is love, according to the scriptures. That means there's nothing better. It sums up all we know or will know. There's nothing higher or deeper or greater or stronger than the love of God. It is a proven love. For God so loved, he gave his only son. It's proven. When we see Jesus Christ, we see the evidence of his love for us. 
Now, it's one thing for me to go home and say, Donna, I love you. You're my wife. I love you. I love you. I love you. Words are great, but action speaks. If she walks in the door after a cold, hard night working at the, at the car lot, and I have dinner on the table, and I do the dishes afterwards, and I just spend time focused on her, she goes, you love me. You've shown me your love by your actions. God giving his son proves his love for us by his action, and there's no greater action than the giving of his son. In fact, did you know that's a military term? You see, Isaiah says, and a son shall be given. Well, that idea of giving, we use that today. When a man or a woman goes and serves their country and they give their life for the country, it's not God sent his son, God gave his son, and his son would give his life for you, for me. In fact, uh, we have a statement for those in the military all gave some, some gave all, giving. And when we think about the love of God and see him giving his son, we know we have been loved because it's been proven through the sacrifice of his son, dying for your sins and mine. Second, it's a living gift. Did you notice the very last words? Life life. Accepting this gift cures the greatest affliction of all. It makes the dead come alive. Galatians 2 tells us because of, of sin, we are spiritually dead, but because of this gift, we have life. The dead become alive. But it is a gift that has to be accepted. It is a gift that we have to respond to. It is for those who believe. Not only does it bring us to life, it preserves our life. If I believe, I shall not perish. It's also a life, not just of the future, but a life for now. It begins at belief. A pastor friend of mine said he had a man come to a man named Bill, and Bill said, Pastor, Pastor, I've got a problem. I thought I was a Christian, but everything is so dull and meaningless. What can I do? And the preacher said, Bill, perhaps you need to get down on your knees. Confess your sins and start all over again. Maybe you need to truly believe in Jesus and what he did for you. Bill left wasn't what he was wanting to hear. But then the preacher got a letter from him, and it said something to this effect. I did it. I got down on my knees and started all over again. Since then, things are really different. I'm experiencing the abundant life in Jesus Christ. Now, friend, you may have grown up in church. You may have prayed a prayer. But are you living the abundant life? Do you have a life overflowing? Is your life filled with joy because of the joy of the gift of Christmas? You might need to stop right now. Turn off the, the set, put it on pause, and get down on your knees. Confess your sin and believe in the Jesus who is God's proof of his love for you. Put your trust in in him. Finally, it's a lasting gift. Uh, the old King James said everlasting life. The version I quoted to you said eternal life. It means that our life with Christ does not end at the grave, but it continues. It never ever stops. It is a life with a destination, a Godward vertical destination that is away from us and at home with Christ. It means we get to call God Abba Father, our dad. And it means that you and I who have believed are heirs 
of the King of Kings. Not only does it have a destination, it has a direction. It is a direction to the people of this world. People who need to hear of this amazing gift. We need to go to the finite people of this world and introduce them to the infinite God who grants eternal life. And when we introduce people to the loving, the living, and the lasting gift, through Jesus Christ they are changed. Their lives are changed. Their futures change. Their destination is changed. And this is the message of Christmas. A friend of mine, we'll call him John. He was 17 years old working in a nursing home. And there was an elderly man in the home by the name of Charlie. And Charlie said, hey, I'm a Christian. And, and my 17-year-old friend was a Christian too. And so they began to have a great friendship, a great relationship. And then one day Charlie came to him and said, hey, um, John, I've got cancer. I'm going to die. And 17-year-old John said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch and see if there's a difference that a, a Christian has when they come to death. Well, sure enough, cancer did its deed. And John, in the last days of his life, would go in and out of a coma. Or not John, but Charlie. And John would come in and work in the room, do his jobs. And one of the days, Charlie woke up from his coma. And Charlie pointed to the corner and he said this. He said, there's Jesus. Soon he's coming to take me home. Can't you see? There's Jesus. At 7 p.m. that night, Charlie went and met Jesus. And John said, I knew that Charlie had died physically, but he didn't really die. In fact, he really began to live for the very first time. And he began to live, my friends, because of this loving, life-giving, lasting gift, the gift of God, Jesus Christ. So I have two questions. Friends, this, this Christmas, if you haven't, will you accept the gift given by love that will bring life and last forever? You can do it by just bowing your head and saying, I put my trust in you, Jesus Christ. I know I've done wrong. I know I'm a sinner. But I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the day, dead. And I choose you as my God, my King, my Savior. That's my first question. My second question, perhaps you're a believer. Perhaps you've already accepted the gift. How is that impacting you? Are you sharing this great gift of love, of life, that lasts with those who need it? I hope you will this Christmas. May God bless and Merry Christmas. Silent night, holy night, all is called.
first again. 